Hi, I'm Sophie. Um, my talk's now here, so I'm going to be looking down a little bit. Um, yeah. So everything is digital by now. Uh, our society is digital. And our society is more and should be more than just a market. We are all not just consumers uh, or entrepreneurs. We are citizens, which is a much richer concept. Um, this is only my second time at the Creative Commons Summit. I was uh, lucky enough to come two years ago to Toronto, which was a really uh, empowering um, and uh, heartening experience. Um, I think it was because I was among so many people who understood who I, what I did and have the same politics and, 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 and work in the same field. Um, so I'm very happy to be back and I'm very grateful to, to have this opportunity to share our work. Um, I'm based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and I run uh, the Commons Network, which is a small group. Um, and we work with activists, thinkers, pioneers, and policymakers to, to tell stories, to build networks, and to propose policies to support the Commons. So we bring this idea of the Commons, um, the value of community, sharing of resources, and, uh, and how this contributes to a social ecological transition more generally, we try to bring this to the political agenda by means of publications, by organizing, um, and by concrete proposals. On many levels, also at the city level, but uh, mostly in uh, knowledge, uh, in the domain of knowledge and digital commons. So we also work in European policy. And we work on regulatory processes, we work on intellectual property reform, uh, research policy, medicines. But often it's hard and often we lose in our civil society coalitions. So why is this, right? Are we terrible advocates? Do we have illegitimate arguments, or illegitimate goals, bad arguments? Um, perhaps, I'm not sure. Um, of course, we have modest resources compared to private and corporate interests, but I think there's more. It's also about the narrative um, that we work in. It's about the, sh the logic of the frame that we work in, which is skewed towards other objectives than the objectives that we work on. So the current frame is, um, of, our, of, of digital policy making is that of the digital single market in Europe. Um, and the digital, the digital single market conceptualizes everything in the digital, re in the digital realm to be geared towards growth, competition, markets, efficiency. So this, this makes it hard to work towards um, uh, public institutions, commons, uh, civic space online, um, because it, it serves different objectives. And, and we can't always use the, the market failure argument, because sometimes there is no market failure. There's just something different that we want to achieve, right? Maybe there should be uh, a, a, a domain that's carved out for commons for public space. Um, so, so basically the way things are framed in the mainstream are, are, um, are putting us at, at odds from, uh, from the start. Um, so together with Alec from Citroën Sifroe and Paul from, from Kennisland, who I'm sure many of you know, we started a project. We started a project for a new frame for European policymaking in the digital arena. This is how we started. <laughs> um, and, and we wanted to work eventually with a broad coalition. So for, for Commons Network, this worked out really well with our ongoing campaign towards the European elections, putting the Commons in the agenda. And um, we thought such a frame would be relevant for a new policy cycle coming up. And we could also influence the approaches of our peers. So we started writing, discussing, what is it that we had in mind? Um, and what would such a frame look like? And what is a frame, actually? <laughs> that was a big question at some point. Um, and we, this was more think tank work. This was more, um, uh, you know, we are mainly advocate organizers. We write manifestos. This was a little bit out of our comfort zone. So, um, uh, uh, you know, we didn't we have entirely clear what was necessary. We had some, so we had some confusing jitsi ses sessions, try to do everything right. Um, we, we shared our ideas, we had a lot of talks, and um, 
you know, we realize that this frame should, should, be, should, should appeal to a very broad range of people, not just to our base or to the left wing in a parliament, or it should appeal to the Greens, the left, but also the liberals and the Christian Democrats and the conservatives, the European Commission, the media, um, national policymakers, and of course our base and our peers. So after many essays, workshops, hacker, uh, workshop with hackers, academics, and policy people, and heated conversations, and these, these frustrating jitsi experiences, um, and working with even a, a strategic communications agency, we came up with these four uh, principles. Um, uh, this is this, let me just, this is uh, after a frustrating, frustrating conversation. Um, we came up with these four principles. Decentralization, um, self-determination, the commons, and public institutions. And this, was, this came out of a consensus process. It was a co-production. Um, um, and we think these were uh, a comprehensive, comprehensive and important principles. Um, we realized, however, that these are not, this is not the frame. These are the high-level policy directions that we want. We, it's, not, it's not the frame that we need to sell these, these principles. Um, so we had to keep going. And we eventually landed a shared digital Europe. And a shared digital Europe is our vision of a digital space that facilitates diversity, empowers communities, and favors an overall people-centric and public interest approach to technology development and innovation. So let me take you through the reasoning of this, this concept. Today, market orth orthodoxy limits our ability to deal uh, with domination by corporate monopolies that constrain both individual freedoms online and the emergence of a truly European or just a civic space in general. Um, so such a policy approach needs to be more than just a market approach. Um, it, it just, you know, seeing digital space as a marketplace only does not does it justice. It's our society, it's a society going through a digital transformation. Um, so it has to be an approach that is society-centric at heart. Uh, and a frame, as such, needs to embrace core European values um, that distinguish Europe, maybe from, from other models, like in the US or in Ch maybe China does it, um, such as a st strong public institutions, democratic governance, um, uh, protection of individual freedoms and com community sovereignty, cultural diversity, uh, human rights and social justice. So it should be also a source of, art, of strength um, supporting social and economic innovation, um, and as well as a new regenerative economy. So we, we see other frames coming up now, other frames being put forward, and they, they focus a lot on um, the individual and the market and the public good. And, and we really, you know, we heard uh, the term human-centric internet now a lot, which is important, but we prefer society-centric, because we feel like, um, Attempting to achieve this, this change that we need solely based on human rights is, is not enough. Um, there is need for a systemic approach which, which emphasizes um, the importance of the collectives, collective communities and society as a whole. So how can this, um, this shared digital Europe be achieved? Right, so then, then comes these principles. Self-determination, cultivating the commons, decentralizing infrastructure and empowering public institutions. And these four principles complement, overlap even, and reinforce each other. Um, so we have to enable self-determination because it must be possible to fully participate in, in social life um, without giving up your personal data uh, and your privacy to, con to commercial entities. So we need, this means we need more democratic models of data governance algorithmic transparency, um, and have a say in how our data can be used for the common good or how we want our data to be used. It means cultivating the commons um, and allowing for this collaborative uh, space where we can share knowledge uh, and create economic value but also social value, where we can, where we can produce in a peer-to-peer in a, in a -peer way. Decentral decentralizing our technological infrastructure will increase Europe's technological sovereignty by re reducing dependency. Um, but it is also a way to allow people to engage in more democratic platforms, which are more localized and more community-based. 
Um, and then empowering public institutions will help us to provide meaningful online spaces um, that are protected from surveillance of commercial platforms. Um, and think about libraries, educational resources, cultural resources. So combining these, these four elements provides us with a strategy with a, with a, uh, to counter uh, deterring, deteriorating online debate, uh, undermining of human rights, um, and closure of knowledge in the digital sphere. And it provides policymakers with an opportunity to work towards this digital society that, and that, course, that counters these current challenges, responds to these current challenges, um, and embraces a hybrid digital space of a market, a public space, and a commons, um, and where people can engage in different ways. And we believe that it is in the capacity of Europe to, to ensure such a digital society. So now um, we, have to, we have this idea, we have this vision, and we, we have to sell it. And we have to link it to policies that can be adopted. Um, and one other question, which is, of course, very obvious in this set setting, is um, how does this relate to the rest of the world? Uh, does this idea translate in, in, in places beyond, beyond Europe? And that's also a question we'd like to, to explore in our, in our session on Saturday, where we will have a chance to do that. Um, and if you would like to read more about this, we have everything uh, online. Thank you very much.